Hello folks and welcome to Monday's edition of Magoo Sports News. Now it was an absolutely action-packed weekend full of sport. The football season has come to an end and it was so, so good that I thought I'd wear a shirt and tie for the occasion. So let's, let's not waste any more time on the introduction and move straight on to see what happened over the weekend. So folks, what's making the headlines on this fine Monday morning? First and foremost, obviously there was the relegation battle, but I have to mention the breaking news coming out, Carlo Ancelotti has been sacked. Now this is a very peculiar one, fair enough he didn't win anything this season, but the season before he won the double in his first season, so I don't agree with Roman Abramovich on this one, I think he should have been given at least this year. I know Roman Abramovich wants to win the Champions League, but a manager is not going to come in and win that trophy in his first season. Uh, a few names have been batted around to replace him. I personally think that fella from Porto that I was telling you about, Andre Villas Boas, will be his replacement. So, also, we had the relegation battle, and oh my god, what a fight it was! Toing and froing, and toing and froing. It was an almost amazing, amazing half of football. The first half, Wolves went 3 0 down to Blackburn. I mean, they looked dead and buried. I don't know what Mick McCarthy said to them, but they came out in the second half, they scored two goals, and then when the other results happened, they managed to survive. I can't believe it. Basically, Birmingham and Blackpool were relegated. I did predict this myself, but it's such a shame that Blackpool went down. They were everyone's second team, and they really entertained us this year. So, um, basically, Manchester City finished third. They beat uh, Bolton 2 0 away. Uh, Arsenal could only muster a Pretty really disappointing 2 all result against Fulham. So it means that Ma Manchester City automatically go into the Champions League and Arsenal have to face a tricky qualifier. Also means that they'll have to come back early from the holidays. So I don't think they'll be too happy about that. Uh, another interesting thing about the league was that Aston Villa beat Liverpool 1-0 and Sunderland beat West Ham 3-0. Now both these teams with a win on the last day moved so far up the table that they're going to get paid an extra £3 million in prize money. That's a hell of a lot of money. That's a decent-ish player. So that's uh, good news for them. Uh, Spurs also, they beat Birmingham obviously to send them down. Spurs now finish fifth, which means they go into the Europa League. They don't have to qualify or anything, they just go straight into it, so they've got extra holidays coming up over the summertime. Now, uh, another thing was the, the, the f uh, Fair Play League, which gives an extra place into Europa League. Fulham were topping that up until yesterday. Now, Zoltan Guerra got sent off in the second half of Fulham's game, which means that they actually don't top the league anymore. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I honestly think Blackpool will now top the Fair Play League and get into the Europa League. This is a bit bizarre. We've got Birmingham relegated, won the Carling Cup, Europa League. Blackpool, fair play league, won that, and then they go into the Europa League. So we're only going to have one team in the Premiership in the Europa League. I don't know what's going on. So anyway, moving on, we've also had the Scottish Cup over the weekend, and Celtic managed to beat Motherwell 3-0. Not a huge surprise there, but to be fair to Motherwell, I watched this game and they did okay actually. They hit the bar after they went 1-0 down, so they could have got it back to 1-0. It stayed 1-0 for quite a while, and then second half, Celtic managed to get that second goal, and that was pretty much game over, and managed to get the third goal. So, fair play to Celtic. After losing the lead, they ended the season at least with a trophy. Still don't like, like Neil Lennon, though. The guy's a bit of a scumbag. Anyway, another bit of news. Uh, Owen Hargreaves has not had his contract renewed by Manchester United. Well, to be fair, the guy's only played, I think, five games in two years. I mean, that's a lot of money to be play paying to a player who plays five games in two years. I don't know how old he is. I think he's only 29 or something. So, still, I think that's his career ended. Such a shame. He was such a good player. Now, uh, moving on into the Formula One. 
I have to step back again and apologise for some remarks I made in my shows earlier. Uh, the Formula 1 was not a bad race actually. Um, the start was amazing, Alonso comes out, pulls himself into the front and then Vettel kind of couldn't get past him, wasn't doing much, came into pit. Uh, changed his tyres, came back out, had some clear track and managed to sort of tactically manoeuvre himself into the front and then it transpired that it was Vettel and Hamilton at the start and basically Hamilton sort of had a chance to kind of catch him but you know last five six laps he was behind him but he didn't really push him so the shame about this is as you can see Sebastian Vettel is now how many points ahead he's 41 points clear of Lewis Hamilton I mean that's a huge margin for so early in the season and he doesn't look like he's gonna lose a race so I don't know hopefully he will retire in a couple of races and it'll get a bit closer and it'll get a bit more exciting so uh, moving on, what else have we got over the weekend? We had the Heineken Cup Final, and this was an um, almightily great game. Um, basically, Northampton came out on firing at all cylinders. They went 22 to 6 up, and then just were destroying them. Uh, Brian O'Driscoll looked like a wounded warrior. He was so, so annoyed. But then, I don't know what happened at halftime. Again, these guys came out at halftime, second half, and they just went for it. They thought, let's throw everything at them. Northampton, I suppose, got a bit nervous, but they came out and scored 27 unanswered points and won the game 33-22. And now that's Leinster won the title two or more times, and only, I think, two teams have ever done that. So, fair play to them. Uh, the Rugby League, as I said, the Challenge Cup for, uh, uh, Cup was on at the weekend. Told you to watch out for that Castleford game, and what a game it was. We had everything in the game. Wakefield came out and took a lead of 16-6, to 6, looking all over Castleford. But then Castleford somehow managed to pull, herself, pull themselves back into it, and they got themselves level 16 all. They had a kick to go 18-16 up with about 10 minutes to go, they missed. Wakefield then got a kick, 18-16 to them. And the last minute of the game, well, was, I think it was the last three minutes of the game, Castleford had a kick from miles out. The guy smacks it, goes over, and then pulls out a draw. So with a draw in the Rugby League Challenge Cup, what happens is they go into 10 minutes of extra time, and no score until nine minutes and 50-odd seconds, and Wakefield, Foul one of the Castleford players and he gets another free kick to get another two points to win it. Right, it was like literally just before the hooter went. So anyway, guy steps up and he smacks it for miles out, gets the points. What a result. Castleford through to the quarterfinals. Thing is though, Warrington, they are the team to watch. They beat someone 116 to nil. Let me just check that. No, sorry, it was 112 to nil. They're top of the Super League. The beating teams are with ease. They will probably go on and win everything, I think, this year. So, anyway, what else? Tennis. Wow, the French Open started yesterday. Bit of a low-key day. Not many of the big guns playing. Only guy to really suffer was a guy called Marin Cilic, who lost to a qualifier. Now, he's the 19th seed, and a couple of seasons ago, he was showing potential to be a top player. But he's out already. Big guns get out under action today, so watch out for that. Andy Murray's not in action until Tuesday. So, in the golf, Ian Poulter pulled off an amazing win against Luke Donald in the final of the World Match Play Championships. If Luke Donald had won that, he'd have gone to world number one. He seemed to bottle it a little bit, I don't know, because a couple of weeks ago he had another chance. If he won a tournament, which he came so close to doing, he would have been world number one, but it's eluded him so far. Um, what else have we got? Well, the last piece of sporting action was the boxing. I told you to keep an eye out for that Groves versus uh, George Groves versus James DeGale. Not the best boxing match ever, but George Groves ended up winning and it ruined James DeGale's 100% record. 
uh, Frank Warren's wanting a replay straight away. He's saying that the fight was not judged right, etc., etc. I don't know, sounds like sour grapes to me, but George Grove probably... Well, I tell you, that was so much sporting news. It's gonna, it took me eight minutes odd just to relay all the information. So I'll do a quick preview of what's coming up this week. Not too much. We've got the Carling Cup of Nations, which is everyone from the British Isles, except for England, of course. Don't know why that is. Anyway, Irish Derby on Tuesday, and then Wales are playing Scotland on Wednesday. Watch out for those ones. Also, the Gary Neville's got his testimonial. That's on Tuesday night as well. Should be fairly interesting. Manchester United event against Juventus. Uh, the tennis continues. It's Roland Garros, the French Open. Like I said, Andy Murray's playing on Tuesday, so watch out for him. Let's see how far he can go in this one. And then finally, we've got a bit of cricket coming up. If you're into the cricket, then watch out for that. England are playing Sri Lanka in a home test match. This is their first home test match for a year almost because they were down on there with the Ashes over Christmas. And that's pretty much all the sport coming up. So, quickly moving on, folks, to my user comment section. And got quite a few user comments in this week, which is great. Good on you guys. Uh, first one comes from a fella called Boom. And he basically says, my Formula One information was way out. Fair enough, I did slightly exaggerate. It wasn't two or three seconds that Hamilton and Button were behind. But to be fair, if you look at the race, you know, Hamilton was about the only person who could contend with Vettel. Jensen Button, he just wasn't at the races. Get it? Anyway, I mean, to be fair, Hamilton and Vettel seem to be just miles ahead of everybody. Uh, Mark Webber, although he managed to get pole position, he just frizzled away in the race and just couldn't seem to keep up with everyone else, so that was that. Anyway, second user comment comes from a fellow called Boom, and he says I should have some more shouting and swearing in my show. What do you mean shouting and swear swearing? Wah! No way, man! Fuck you! Anyway, that's enough of that. He also mentioned uh, about something about my ponytail, so... Yeah. Next user comment comes from a lady called Boom, and she says my coffee cup gets bigger and bigger. Well, I do like my coffee. Oh yeah. Anyway, last user comment comes from a fella called Boom. Strange name. Must be referring to Dexter. Um, and he basically says, is that Cesc Fabregas' last game for Arsenal? I honestly believe it is. I've been saying this for quite a long time. I mean, the two things about this. One, the guy doesn't want to play for Arsenal anymore. So, you know, just get rid of him. And two, he's not been playing well anyway. I mean, his heart isn't in Arsenal anymore. He just wants to go back to Barcelona. So I honestly think that's his last game. Uh, he didn't even play at the weekend. He didn't even play the last three or four games. So that'll be him gone. Cash in. I read somewhere recently that they're wanting 50 million for him. That's a lot of money. I don't think they'll get that for him. I think honestly he'll go for about 35 million or something. So Wenger should cash in, get that money, sell other players, and then basically start next season on a sort of new squad. Now, uh, he also says, who else will leave from the top four clubs? Now, I'm assuming you mean by the big four, not including Liverpool, but you mean Manchester City. So I'll review them anyway. Chelsea, I honestly think it depends on the manager. I don't think any players will leave per se. There's talk of drug believing, but if they get a good manager in, you know what drug is like. He'll either get on with him or he won't. So, uh, Manchester City, I honestly think Balotelli will leave. He wants to go back to Italy. I find this absolutely peculiar because he gets racially abused in his own country and by his own supporters. So why the hell would he want to go back there? I know he was born there, but come on, what's the problem? Uh, Colo Toure, he'll probably leave. I mean, he's banned for uh, illegal drug use, so I'm not too sure how long the ban was. Uh, it could be the end of his career. He's getting on as well. I think he's 28, so depends what happens. We'll see. Uh, Adebayor, I don't think will leave Manchester City. He'll stay. Uh, Manchester United, only player I think will leave from there is Berbatov. I don't think he's had the best of seasons. He's kind of been overlooked, especially with Chicharito coming in and scoring lots of goals. They wouldn't mind holding on to him, you know, as a backup, but I don't think Berbatov will take that. Uh, Arsenal, oh, where do I start? There's a list of mile long of players that they, they, want, they need to get rid of, should I say. First and foremost, Danielson. That guy's rubbish. Get rid of him. 
Rosicky, again, rubbish, get rid of him. Arshavid, great player, but just doesn't seem like he wants to play. I don't know what his problem is, he gets paid loads of money, play football. Um, Bentner, Bentner needs to go as well, he get rid of him, and I think Nasri will leave as well, apparently he's kicking up a bit of a stink about his contract, so once uh, get rid of all those players, bring in half the Neil team because they won the French League, and Arsenal will be okay next season. So that's all for